We just got more leaks. Hey guys, welcome to Frame Chasers. Uh, I'm really liking doing this kind of uh, investigative type of content. It's really fun. Um, our friend Rogame uh, over on Twitter posted some Ashes of the Singularity 3080 benchmarks. Now his first post showed the 2080 Ti actually being faster than the 3080. Um, and then he kind of followed up with that and uh, found some other users that posted their 2080 Ti numbers. And uh, what they showed... Actually, let me. I'll bring this up here on the screen. Um, what exactly Rogame posted? It's up over on a uh, WCCF Tech here. Um, yeah. Okay, check this out. So we got. This was just the other. This was today, actually. Actually, the day of recording. Um, RTX 3080, 88.3 FPS. Um, 2080 Ti best, 89.7 FPS. And he also obviously points out. Please keep it in mind, we don't know the- oh, what the hell is this? We don't know the, uh, the clocks. Right, obviously. So, further down here, he was get, um, he got some of his, his, I guess, community members here to test him out. A stock 2080 Ti is 70 FPS. So, a uh, 3080 is about 26% faster than a, than a stocked, which is what I've been saying this entire damn time. Um, let's go down here. Yeah, that's all that matters. Okay. So, God, stop clicking on it. So, 3080, 26% faster than a, than, a, than a stock 2080 Ti. Now, we're going to do some calculator magic here. We know that a stock 2080 Ti is 250 watts from the factory. No overclocking, no mods. What do you think if you add 26% on top of that is going to be? 1.26. Oh my god. And uh, what do you think is the stock power limit of a 3080? Could it, could it possibly be 320 watts? You know? 20. Oh my god. 26% faster? Could... Could, could could this conspiracy theory possibly line up, people? Like, oh man. Okay, so next on the list of what we're going to do here. So obviously what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to benchmark my card, obviously. Crank that shit, see how far I can go. But I'm going to do something special for this video, actually. I'm going to limit my 2080 Ti to 320 watts. So... The, the goal is, if we have a 3080 at 300, assumed 320 watts, we have a 2080 Ti limited itself to 320 watts. Uh, limited. It's, it's going to be overclocked to 320 watts. Um, what's the performance difference going to be between those two cards? It's a pretty good apples to apples comparison here. I mean, as apples to apples as it's going to get because... The we assume the Samsung eight nanometer um, node is more efficient, which you know what it might actually not be. Like it is a ten nanometer node. It's it's kind of like a half node down, but it might be so crappy that it might actually just be on par with TSMC's twelve nanometer. That's kind of the interesting part about this whole thing. So let's just let's just assume both cards are going to be at 320 watts for this benchmark and then let's compare the numbers and then we can kind of extrapolate to see if the 3080 is really just a rebranded 2080 ti with 26 percent more power limit which is the 26 percent extra performance that you're getting which is what i've been saying since the damn release I love that the the more and more of these leaks that come out, the more I'm right. Remember what I said in the first video? There's nothing better than being right. Nothing. So before I get into the benchmarks here, we're going to have four results, I think. We're going to have the stock 2080 Ti, which we know does 70 FPS. Then we're going to have a stock 2080 Ti... 
power limited, uh, power overclocked to 320 watts. And um, I'm gonna leave the slider at zero, so I'm not gonna increase the core. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave the card alone to see what it does with an extra 70 watts. Um, then the third one is going to be a 320 watt power limit with the core slider slid over as far as it can go before it crashes pretty much. Um, what, what that, when you move the, the core slider over with a power limit, it automatically adjusts the, um, the, the voltage and the core clock to make sure that both of those numbers fit into that power budget. So, um, you pretty much crank it until the millivolts drop so far that it can't maintain that boost clock anymore. So I'm going to do that. That'll be number three. Um, number four will be just my card maxed out to the limit to see what it can do. Um, probably like. 450 watts or some shit like that who like who knows we, we we don't worry about that power draw that thing we don't care um and then the uh last one will be the 3080 number um we already have that number from row game but i'm gonna post that uh that screenshot up so you can compare the numbers uh as you like and um yeah okay let's get into it uh i'm gonna start with the 320 watt one and we're gonna go from there here's some pictures So, it kind of lines up. Um, the first one was 82 FPS. And that was with the, uh, the, the 320 watt power limit. With the 320 watt power limit, uh, no slider movement. The core kind of bounced around 1860 to 1905. And it kind of bounced like that a little bit up and down. But I would say on average, it was about 1890 megahertz is what it bounced around at. So the stock 250 watt one is around 1730 megahertz. So just bumping up that power limit to 320 watts increased the core clock by itself with its own algorithms to about, uh, you know, 200 megahertz, um, which is huge, huge. But not quite what the 3080 can do, though. It's still... Let, let me calculate this here yeah so with with the uh with the power limit at uh, 320 watts the slider at zero core hovering about 1900 megahertz uh 1890 it's still about seven percent slower than the 3080 um now the next one after that was um plus 150 on the slider which is about as far as it could go um it, in this one, the benchmark was doing a sine wave that was like much larger. Like so, it would on the ver on the lower power scenes when it was like zoomed into the ships, it would go all the way up to twenty one hundred megahertz, and then on when it zoomed out and there was like thousands of units on the screen, it would actually go all the way down to nineteen twenty. So. Yet, depending on the load, it actually wasn't boosting any higher than the other one because there was no power budget there. It couldn't drop the millivolts any lower to increase it. But the the over the average number that we saw there was almost the exact same as the 3080. 
exactly the same. And you know what? That would explain why the 3080 is so damn bouncy in the uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark and the Doom Eternal one. You can literally see the FPS going like, like jumping like this because it's probably just constantly hitting that power limit or thermal limit of some sort. We could probably assume that if you power unlock the 3080, just like you power unlock the 2080 Ti, they would both probably scale to this. I mean, we don't, again, we don't know how the 8 nanometer node is going to handle voltage, but we know that Turing can scale to 2200 megahertz with safe voltages, I want to say. Uh, we don't know if Ampere is going to do that, but we can assume that it probably will. So, the numbers that I have that are my, my 2080 Ti completely maxed out, you could probably safely assume that you can take that number and add another 5%, and that would be a power modded 30. That's, that's kind of a shot in the dark on my part, but I'm going to assume that the 8 nanometer node doesn't handle voltage as well. It's, it's, the, uh, history tells us that the smaller the node, the less tolerant it is of voltage just because of the sheer density of it. Like if you, if you make a process denser and you increase the voltage, the hot spots on the die get uh, exponentially hotter. So it just can't clock as high. That's just, that's just the way the, these things are designed. It's just the way it is. But let's just assume that it'll clock the same or cap out at the same. I'm just going to go with that for my prediction. So the score so far is two for me and one for the haters. But on another note, um, now that we have quite a few confirmations, theory, th theoretical confirmations of um, the 2080 Ti just being the exact same as the 3080 with some more power, um, if you can find a 2080 Ti right now, like, I don't, I don't know what prices they got in your guys' regions, but, like, here, low, if you can get one for, like, $400, okay, my suggestion would don't wait for, unless you care about RT, and if you care about Cyberpunk, sure, get a 3080, but if you're more into the esports scene and you don't care about ray tracing, um, I mean, the 2080 Ti is such a good ray tracing card anyway, but... If you don't care about that stuff and you just want sheer FPS number and rasterize, pick up a 2080 Ti and power mod it. This shit's crazy. You can get you can get 2080 Ti's for a quarter of the price right now. And when the benchmarks come out for the 3080, you'll be laughing all the way home to the bank. All the way home to the bank. Because you profited off of everyone's fear and panic. And that's what you should be doing. If somebody's dumb enough to panic sell their card before getting third-party benchmarks, take advantage of them, lowball them, send them a message and offer them 300, who cares, take that shit off of them. You know what it also is, though, with the whole ray tracing thing, is Turing never had a fair shot at ray tracing. Like, in my opinion, the only good game that did ray tracing properly was Wolfenstein Youngblood, and... That game sucks balls, man. I tried to play it. Oh, man, it's a bad game. It's so bad. It's as bad as they say it is. Um, but if you just run the benchmarks in that game with a 2080 Ti, I got a 1440p monitor, uh, 165 hertz. And if I max that game out, full ray tracing, quality mode, um, 1440p, complete max settings and DLSS 2.0 on top of it, I get 160 FPS at 1440p um, with full ray tracing. So like when I actually saw that, I was like, this is the future. Like, like this, like, like the 2080 Ti with DLSS can do ray tracing phenomenally. The problem is there's no examples of it. Um... When Control came out, it was using direct uh, DLSS 1.9. It was still kind of fuzzy. Um, it still couldn't boost it past like 60 FPS. Yeah, like like there's there's like Wolfenstein Youngblood is the only game 
that did it right. And yeah, like I, I going forward, I'm I like like with uh, Cyberpunk and DLSS implementations and uh, Death Stranding and those types of things. Like the 2080 Ti is gonna go far, man. Don't worry about it. If you can pick one up for like three hundred or four hundred dollars, just enjoy it, power mod it, and you'll still get a hundred FPS and ray tracing max settings with DLSS. In 1440, like, you'll, you'll be fine. Like, 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 you'll be more than fine because you saved a quarter of the price on one. That, that's, that's the, oh, you know what I mean? I guarantee you if Wolfenstein was a better game or if, like, Bethesda invested in just not making a shit. Like, like, the, like, the reason why Turing has a good, like, okay, so the only good game that we have is Control. And... The problem with control is it runs at 60 FPS with RT on, right? Um, maybe 90 with the LSS, which is still good. But the problem is that is the best game that we have that also supports ray chasing. If Wolfenstein was actually a solid game, like maybe if it was like Rage 2 or uh, I don't know, like, like if it was like The Witcher or something like that, and then it was running at 160 FPS, 1440p, ray tracing. It, it, people wouldn't be so hateful of RT, I would find. But, like, it just took NVIDIA way too damn long to get DLSS going. That was the main problem. So, like, RT and Turing has just been tarnished forever. But, like, if you have a uh, Turing card, you're going to be fine because of DLSS. Like, DLSS is what... Uh, that's the magic to all of the, this. That's the magic to NVIDIA right now is DLSS. Anyway, guys, I ranted long enough. Uh, to summarize, 250 watt, 2080 Ti, 70 FPS. 320 watt stock 2080 Ti. Um, what the heck was it? 82 FPS. 320 watt with 150 slider. Exactly the same as the 3080. And, uh, t my 2080 Ti completely maxed out is an extra 9 to 10% on top of that. So, 3080 plus, uh, plus another 150 watts or something, and you can get 10%. <laughs> that's, that's how you can scale that. I think they definitely have the same, uh, even though NVIDIA showed that slide of, like, power to performance curves... I guarantee they both go up and cap out at the same rate because there's like, there's no way I'm drawing like an extra 200 watts for 10%. That's just like ridiculous. But I don't care. I, I just want speed. You know what I mean? So it's fun for me. The main point I wanted to get across for this one was if you take the the, the numbers that we have, it's, it's a fair statement to say that the 3080 is about 30% faster than a 2080 Ti. If you take a 2080 Ti and give it 30% more power budget, which is a which is 320 watts conveniently, which is a, what a 3080 is, you get the exact same performance. And the um, the Shadow of the Tomb Raider one and this Ash of the Singularity one, they scaled like the percentages were the exact same. So. If we get another one or two more of these, I will, like, bet money, like, like down that this information is 100%. Like, uh, the, the numbers, you can't take Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Ashes of the Singularity and have the exact same performance different differences and have it not be true, you know what I mean? But that's what I want to get across in this video. Um, hopefully we all learned something today and, uh, if you like the content, hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff for me. And uh, comment down below if you can find a 2080 Ti for a cheap price in your area. Because that's hilarious. Um, and pick that shit up. Trust me. Like, you'll thank me later. Um, thanks for joining me. Talk to you guys later. I'll see you in the next one. Talk to you later.